It's time to measure the cylinder bores. We want to check for taper or egg shaping inside each one, so our measurements are becoming more three-dimensional now. I have to measure two axis scissors horizontally and vertically at three different depths of the bore to get an idea of each one's condition. I made three sets of circles representing the bores with the cross center lines. The block outline is there for reference. The top, middle, and bottom row represent the top, middle, and bottom measurements inside the bore. I'm using a cheap $10 set of telescoping gauges to do this. After you feel out your bore measurements, you still have to measure these things with something else. I'm having to use my digital calipers because I don't have a big enough micrometer, but I really only need to be accurate to a thousandth of an inch anyway. These things are mindlessly simple. They're spring-loaded to ensure they fill the gap you're measuring, and they have this screw-type locking thingy in the handle. Stock bore is 3.3465 inches, so we're going with the 2.5 to 3.5 inch jank. It's very easy to make a mistake. It takes practice. I'm starting at the top about 3 eighths of an inch into the bore, measuring just below the ring lands. Typically, wear occurs on the leading and trailing edges of the bores because of how the pistons are constantly articulating on the rods. That articulation tends to cut this direction of the bore deeper as it wears. You can see this by examining the shiny spots where the crosshatch of the hone is worn through. That typically means the measurement should be wider there. Next you measure 90 degrees off the thrust angle for a reference to determine egg shaping at that depth. Write each of your measurements down as you go along and pay attention to how they differ. Now measure halfway through the stroke to test the wear from the piston skirt's thrust angles. Piston slap occurs during articulation on the wrist pin. The looser and sloppier the pistons are in the bore, the more this wears out of round. If the measurement differs from the top measurements, that's called taper because the cylinder walls aren't perfectly parallel with each other. If that gets out of hand, the rings won't seal well and your engine makes less compression and consumes more oil because the rings won't see. The deepest measurement of each bore should be about half inch up from the stroke. You can see where the bores have polished the cylinder walls smooth with the rings so it's easy to find. You want the measurement to be just above where the compression ring lands. Fill out your measurements at each depth as you move along. Telescoping gauges are a perfectly acceptable way to do this. They're tedious but very inexpensive. Each measurement should be repeated several times to ensure you've got it right. That means essentially it's 72 measurements to come up with the 24 values on this chart. Unless you're very gifted, this process takes time. You don't need to see me measure all of these, but I'm stressing that point just to let you know what kind of time these edits are saving you. So here we are, close up at only 2x. It's easier to see how this works at this speed. Notice the handle slides around on the probes. Pay attention to that while you center the tool inside the bore. Gradually tighten the lock while feeling around with the probes. Pay attention to where I experience drag. It should be a little bit difficult to rock the gauge back and forth no matter where you are, off-centered from where you measured. If you can't rock it, it's too big. If you don't feel any drag, start over. You want it to feel like it's almost binding while you wiggle it around. Once you've got it just right, measure your result and try again to make sure you get the same thing again. If not, measure a third time and take the average of the three. So here are the results. You can judge by these numbers how much taper or egg shaping is occurring inside the bores. There's a limit of only four ten thousandths of an inch in variance in your cross measurements or on the taper between the depths. Guess what? In that regard, these measurements show I have problems everywhere because some values are as far as two thousandths off on taper and three thousandths off on egg shaping if the, any of these measurements are right. I've already marked the variances between them in ten thousandths here. The values at five ten thousandths variances probably aren't an issue, but the tens and twenty ten thousandths marks would be. So why would I put myself through all this? I mean, everybody knows I have a dial bore gauge, and I've converted this over with the digital indicator on the top so that we can more quickly go through these things without having to do a whole bunch of conversions off of a dial. After all, we only need to be accurate to a thousandth of an inch, and this is accurate to a half thousandth. I'm just going to insert this in here, and as we pull back towards us, you'll see that this number increases, and then it gives us a value. The highest value it reads is the value we want to go with. My fault. So I'm going to pull this forward. Looks like we got six thousandths of an inch. So that's 3.344. We have this zeroed at uh, 3.350 right now. So if we subtract the reading we got off of this, which was six thousandths of an inch, from 3.350, we get 3.344. And all I have to do is just walk down the bores with this 
and measure at three different depths. In many places these measurements were dead on. If we look down the list here, that's dead on, that's dead on, that's dead on, that's dead on, that one. So many of them are only a half a thousandth off. And many of them are only a thousandth off. So this proves the telescope and gauges aren't accurate enough to determine egg shaping and taper. For instance, look at number three's top measurement, reading three thousandths off between the cross measurements in purple. The blue number shows it's only a thousandth difference. Still egg shape, but two thousandths doesn't cut it when you need to measure four ten thousandths of an inch accuracy or less. So what this proves is, telescoping gauges are good enough for determining whether or not a block has been overboard, but that's about it. To determine taper and egg shaping, you need to have a bore gauge. It's so much faster and requires so much less effort. When checking for taper, you want to pay attention to how the thrust angle measurements through each bore's depths interact with each other. Number four is perfectly parallel through its whole bore. Number three has a thousandth of an inch taper from the bottom to the top, so it's about twice the service limit specification. Number two seems to flare a half thousandth at the top, but I bet it's still within spec because we're measuring in half thousandths right now. Use the ten thousandth dial gauge on your own time. I'm just showing you the concept here. Number one is also perfectly straight, so I have significant taper in only one bore. That means number three's compression numbers were likely a little bit lower than the rest. Another thing you need to examine is each depth's crossed measurements against each other. The same 4 ten thousandth service limit applies to egg shaping as well. I don't know where the half thousandth kicks over on the ten thousandth scale with this gauge, so each blue crossed measurement from a specific depth of a bore that's only a half thousandth off, I'm ignoring. If any of them are a thousandth or more, we have egg-shaped wear, which also affects the seating of the rings and your compression numbers. Number four is fine. Number three is problem up from the bottom up. Number two's got some beef from the middle up. And number one's a little eggy all over. So, thanks for your time tuning in. Like it if you learned something, and if I left anything out, there's a comments field below. If you do both of those things and you haven't subscribed yet, then why haven't you subscribed yet? Stay tuned for the Pistons coming up next.